Who doesn't like to watch engineers build cool structures? Welcome back to another video from Lord Gizmo, where today we'll be looking at some awesome engineering projects and some of the machines that work on them. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to see more like it. First up, we have the KDS-50 from Chemrock, cutting apart a Boeing 707. It is a 1.5 meter diameter diamond cutter saw blade, designed for cutting steel, concrete, reinforced concrete, rock, and glass fiber reinforced plastic. You can attach it to any 15 to 25 ton excavator. At maximum operating hydraulic pressure, which is 350 bar, it rotates with a torque of 721 newton meters while the top rotation speed is 2,000 RPM. Don't worry too much. The Boeing 707 seen in this video retired in 1975 after serving for 15 years. Since then, it has been used rarely for educational purposes and as a film set. After the successful disassembly, the individual parts of the aircraft were auctioned in 2021. Next, we have the steel bending machine from Otto Klosterman. It is the largest bending press in Europe, which exerts a force of 4,000 tons. A total of eight different bending presses process materials from structural steel, light metal, and stainless steel through to high-strength steel grains. When the mighty presses are operating, you're sure to hear the steelworks. It's a stunning display. Components up to 20,000 mm long and 2,000 mm thick are cold forged. The company's customers range from bridge ships and crane builders to heavy engineering and offshore equipment. Next, we'll be looking at the Sylvenstein Dam in Germany and its revitalization. Its rehabilitation began in 2012, and the main task was to correct the water level. The dam is 42 meters high, 180 meters long, and is built on a 100 meter deep erosion trench filled with river detritus. As a new ceiling element, a two phase diaphragm wall was installed, and its core position was shifted slightly downstream of the dam axis. The diaphragm wall had to be built to a depth of up to 70 meters below the dam's crest. Bauer built a concrete cutoff wall with a total area of 10,000 square meters, starting from the 180 meter long dam crest. The diaphragm wall was built by using a grab in the top portion of the trench. Next is the Irbik Viaduct. It's a 265 meter long bridge in Luxembourg, connecting two national highways and providing a direct connection of an industrial zone to the primary road network. The viaduct is a composite structure standing 36 meters above the ground. It consists of two abutments and six steel girder columns, finished with a concrete bridge deck. During project implementation, Jean de Null Group used a new formwork system. 
The construction budget was cited at 14 million euros. The Takarati port is the central pivot for all supplies to the African nation of Ghana. Its construction started in 2013 and was completed in 2017. The first phase was the extension of the 1.1 km breakwater protecting the port, the deepening of the port to 14 meters, and the construction of a 200 meter quay wall. This extension enabled the port to welcome bigger ships and generate significant revenues in the process. In a second phase, the port deepened further to 16 meters, and another 400 meters of quay wall was constructed. In the third phase, the quay wall was extended by another 200 meters, producing the final 16 meter deep and 1800 meter long quay wall. The Jean de Null Group, the same company that worked on that bridge before, took on the financing, design, and construction of this wall the extension of a breakwater, and the corresponding dredging work for this port extension project. Shaft drilling is a method to construct foundational piers for megastructures such as bridges, flyovers, and more. First, a hole is drilled into the ground, fairly straightforward, then a steel cage is inserted into the hole, and concrete is poured over it. The pier may reach the soil bedrock or even exceed it. Here we have time-lapse footage from the Keller Group, doing the same for a 7.8 meter diameter pier. The company used the BG-28 a rotary drilling rig with a maximum drilling depth of 65.7 meters. They drilled for a 12 meter diameter secant pile wall to construct a bearing slab and pre-sink for the shaft. The drilling and insertion of the remaining shaft inside the secant pile was done by the CAH500 drill mounted on a Liebherr 885 base crane. For our last stop, we take you to Chicago. This 500,000 square foot facility is where Atlas produces 1,000 tons of pipe piles in a single shift. Every pipe pile is made from hot rolled coil steel. After testing, the coils are slit to size based on the pile diameter and loaded under the tube forming line. Once the steel is uncoiled and flattened, it's joined to the end of another coil the continuous joint sheets enter the production process. Five forming rollers are used to shape the welded steel into a curve. Each roller bevels the pipe a little more deeply until the flat pipe takes on a U-shape. After that, the pipe piles are welded using electric resistance welding. The pile pipe is then gradually cooled by a continual supply of water. An ultrasonic test is performed before cutting it to the required length. Lastly, the weld integrity is determined by pressing and flattening a sample piece.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you check out one of these two for more cool machinery. Feel free to like and subscribe, we always appreciate it. And with that, we'll see you next time.